Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's webinar of Learning English the Green School Way. I'm Pancha, I'm from Admission Department. I've been working with parents and students coming all around the country and the globe, uh, assisting them along the way of admission process and then preparing their green school journey and Bali life. So I'll be your moderator today, and I would like to introduce our speakers today. Uh, of the uh, the first cells, he's our literacy teacher in middle school. He will be happy to share with us what his class looks like, and then what a literacy lesson project they are doing now. And then next is Jack Gordon from Green School uh, English Program who has run this program for about two years now. Two years. Yeah. Two years now. I've been and it. he's helping kids coming from non-English speaking country to learn English in our jungle campus. So we've been receiving so many questions from family asking if it's possible to uh, for kids to um, uh, apply to green school who has zero or very limited uh, English level to Green School Bali, uh, or if this is dream, it's just a dream. So we hear that, and then of course we would like to open our door as wide as possible for people and kids who would like to learn in our school and community. So today is a really special session for you to find answers of that questions in your minds about learning English in Green School Bali. So before we start, um, as you know that this presentation is 45 minutes long, but also in that limited time, we would lo love to hear from you. Please feel free to drop us email through your chat box. So I think the first change I will give to you, Jack, mm -hmm. to uh, explain a little bit about the program. Sure. Some yours. Yeah, so let me explain a little bit about um, Green School English. Uh, Green School English is a program we run here at Green School for students that are looking to improve their English language skills and also get a little bit of a, a Green School uh, learning experience while they're here. And the way that we run the program is that we run two semesters a year and each semester is divided up into four four-week blocks. And um, you can join for one block or you can join for two blocks depending on um, your availability. And if you ever need to find out a dates on when those blocks are running, you can just check that at our website, greenschool.org slash greenschoolenglish. So a little bit more about the program. We take in students aged six to 11 years old that would fit into the primary school program here at Green School. And we aim to really work on their English language skills, um, particularly to get them prepared for um, life at international schools be that green school or another international school um, elsewhere. So the, the focus of Green School English is really um, working on those communication skills and literacy that they're going to need to go on to succeed at um, green school. So we'll take in students. Um, some students join us who are looking to enter green school, who maybe don't quite have the English skills yet to um, go on into the primary program. And we also take on students that might just join for one four week block that are just looking to do sort of an intensive uh, English language program in the jungle. You see here, get a little bit of a sort of once in a lifetime experience learning at Green School. And the way that we go about teaching um, the language skills is very much um, similar to what you'll see at the primary, middle and high school programs here. We take the same sort of thematic, experiential, hands-on approach that you see throughout the campus here at Green School. So really getting the kids out of the classroom as much as possible, really getting them out and um, experiencing English and applying those English skills um, in a whole range of activities. We have them out in the gardens, learning about gardening. Then we take them from the gardens into the kitchen and cooking what they were um, gardening out in the gardens and really a lot of this sort of hands-on experiential learning that um, Green School is kind of so famous for um, now. And it's a great way to get them learning English. And for those students looking to enter Green School, it can be a really um, good kind of transitionary period 
we find that students coming from non-English speaking backgrounds, of course, the, the English can be a struggle for them moving to Green School, but also sometimes actually the um, learning methods here at Green School, if they come from a more traditional school background, it can be a little bit of an adjustment, um, adjusting to that kind of hands-on experiential learning. So not only are we helping them get used to uh, English learning language environment, but it also helps prepare them for that um, green school environment and the kind of learning that they're going to be doing here as well. And maybe Pat Dave can tell you a little bit more about um, what the sort of learning environment looks like in the, in the main school. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thanks for that, Jack. And I, I just want to start by saying I think it's an indicator of the success of Green School English and, and Jack's team that we have so many students who originally joined Green School English and then after a semester of doing that are able to be integrated into the full Green School classroom, um, especially those who maybe when they start at Green School English have very little in the way of, um, of their fluency in English. But um, clearly Jack and his team just focus on as well as being inclusive um, by getting out and about and in the community and just focusing on that foundational level of English that you really need in order to be a success. Um, and I think that just kind of goes to show um, the strength of the program that we have here at Green School English. Um, in my own context, I'm a, a middle school lit literacy teacher. So um, I teach to um, across grade six, seven and eight. So anywhere from 11 years old to kind of 14 years old. Um, and for us, we really view that as the start of the child's development into a global citizen, you know, really starting to understand the world beyond their borders. And um, as Jack used the term experiential, um, doing a huge amount of experiential learning in our immediate community and um, really attempting to turn the kids into outward looking individuals, not just retreating into the beautiful campus that we have here, but understanding local issues, whether it's the Balinese context in Indonesia as a, as a huge vibrant country, or even in the global context as well. Um, and obviously, in order to do that successfully, the kids do need to have this foundational level of English um, in order to really be able to express themselves, to understand, especially as we go through middle school, um, to, through grade six to grade seven to grade eight, to start to understand more abstract concepts, to start understanding the world beyond their immediate surroundings, um, and to really uh, start to focus on not just huge overwhelming issues, but understanding how we can break down certain issues, whether it's um, civil rights or um, issues related to world poverty, really breaking it down and looking at the intricacies and the nuances of that and how we as um, a 13 year old child living in Bali can affect important change in their um, immediate surroundings and maybe even create a ripple effect to affect change in their, um, it, you know, further and further afield, whether that's in Bali, Indonesia, or the rest of the world. Um, so I think that what we do best in middle school English, which obviously builds on what green school English provides, is teaching the kids to take action. You know, no matter whether we have most of our lessons in the classroom, always be looking for ways to um, look beyond our immediate surroundings and you know, I think all of us at Green School understand that there's no use in kind of telling a child that they're going to be the, the leaders of tomorrow. We have to teach them to take action to make the world a better place today. And obviously that manifests itself differently in um, grade six to how it might in grade seven to how it might in grade eight. But as I said earlier, um, I think in middle school, we are lucky that we have those three integral years that really, um, where the, the child develops into a young adult. I spend a lot of time talking to my, to my grade eights about, you know, you're not kids anymore, you're young adults, and this is your chance to really get out there and make a change. And so I think what we need to do in um, middle school English, um, which Green School English provides the foundation for, is to really teach the kids to make action, to think critically about um, serious global issues. And I think kind of between us, especially with the students that come from green school English into middle school English. Um, we find that they are wonderful members of the community, um, dynamic, engaged. And I think that says a lot about um, what green school English as a program offers and what we as the middle school English team offer. Great. Thanks, yeah. guys.
for your explanation. So uh, while we are waiting for questions coming in, so I would like to inform you that this um, webinar is available for the record, recorded versions after this live session. You can access there and then uh, through the portal that we will provide later. And then uh, we will try to go through all questions today, but if the time doesn't allow us, then we will be following up with you for sure afterward. So um, just adding some information on uh, Dave and Jack. Uh, so mainly, I mean, English is the instructional language in principle, yeah, and the primary language we use. And Balinese, or I mean, sorry, uh, Indonesian languages is one of the mandat uh, mandatory mm -hmm. subject that everyone should take in the class. And then, uh, as after school activities, we also offer another foreign language yeah. after uh, Indonesian already taken. It's um, Spanish yeah. and uh, French. Yeah, well, I, I can yeah. speak to that for a second because we've we've just this semester, starting from January, um, introduced the option of a, not just an after school class um, for French and Spanish, but to actually um, have it integrated in the, into the actual curriculum. Uh, that's for students who have um, progressed beyond um, in their Indonesian proficiency. So, um, so all students, say if we have an, an Australian student, um, they will be expected to go to Indonesian class until they reach a level where they graduate out of that um, and go on to, they can study um, French or Spanish or, and I really wish I could take this class, um, there's also the option of studying uh, mostly in, in English, uh, Indonesian culture or cultures, because there's, there's so many of them, you know, we're, we're lucky to be part of this very strong, intact culture in Bali. But I've, I've lived in Indonesia for eight years now and, you know, just traveling throughout the country, just a reminder of um, all the incredible cultures and how much we have to learn, um, especially as foreigners com coming to live here. And I think that's really important, as well as the Baza Indonesia lessons, uh, getting the kids up to that level of proficiency so that they can engage the local community who after all may not speak English um, and I, I think that, that's manifested itself recently with um, uh, Pak Andre one of our teachers taking students to uh, local farmers uh, to take part in a rice cycle course uh, growing and harvesting um, the rice and although I haven't been able to join Andre says that the absolute highlight is seeing this the students uh, communicate with the farmers in Bahasa Indonesia and that's a real you know one of those moments that we allow ourselves as green school teachers to to really do a fist pump and, and say yeah we're, we're doing something important here. I suspect you speak Balinese as well. I can not speak Balinese. <laughs> hey, I've, I've only lived in in Bali for a year so that, that's a Sunday yeah, oh, yeah my, my wife's family are all, okay. are all Sundays. Oh not really. No. <laughs> I barely speak Bahasa Indonesia. Oh, thank you. Okay, so next, I think I want to know how many students you already have uh, since this, um, I mean, since the... Since we started? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think since we started, well, we tend to run fairly small classes in Green School English. Uh, we like to have a very high teacher to student ratio, so we can really focus on the individual needs of students. I think since we started off the top of my head, we've probably had about 30 students graduate from the Green School English program. And of those 30, we've had probably about 15 students that are now enrolled full time at, um, at Green School here. Green School yeah, School yeah. And it's great to sort of follow up with teachers like Pat Dave and see how those students are doing as they um, enter Green School and how they've adjusted to life in the, in the main school. Yeah, yeah. So you may uh, have questions about how, uh, in terms of admission process between Green School English to mm -hmm. Green School Bali, which is actually it's separate program, which separate process as well. So uh, once a student finishes Green School English program with Jack and Tim, uh, they can apply for the following semester to be full uh, regular student at Green School. However, um, the process as well will inform how um, uh, their you know, um, achievement with mm. Green School English also meeting their expectations as well. Yeah. So as Jack said that mm. 50, 60, of total enrolled Green School English then become Green School Bali students. Some of them may not consider to apply to Green School Bali, but some of them may have to take another extra time outside Green School English program to improve their English outside there. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I would like to ask if someone were to uh, enroll in your grade school in this program for only one or two, is this kind of easy to follow? Let's say someone coming in uh, in uh, block two only mm -hmm. or two and three only. Yeah. yeah. Really, you know? So, I mean, this is something that we've, um, we've designed the program. So it is possible for students to enter later in the semester. So, for example, block three or four. In fact, um, often block four, it can fit within um, some countries, summer holidays. We get a lot of students join just for that final block. But it's something that we're very um, careful of in our planning when we're planning the whole program, that we make sure that it is um, accessible for students to join later on in the semester. They're not going to feel um, left behind by the work. We make sure that each block is sort of nicely compartmentalized with learning so that if they come to block four, we will make sure that we teach them everything they need in that block for the projects and the topics that we will be doing um, in that block as well. So it, it's absolutely possible to come later in the semester. It's possible to join for one block at the beginning of the semester as well, and, um, both walks. And depending on the student's um, current English level, they might only, you know, if they're pretty much at the level required for entry to green school, they might just want one mark of um, green school English prior to entry, just to kind of give them that little bit of a boost in confidence, get them feeling comfortable in the school environment so that once they enter into green school, it's a nice smooth transition. There are students that maybe need a little bit more um, improvement in their English before they're in a English learning environment. They might need a full semester of, of learning at Green School English um, before they enter the school. And it's not that once they finish Green School English that their English learning will end. They will still be supported um, at the regular school. We have um, the ELL department that supports in those students' learning. And in some cases, we can help continue supporting those students once they're at um, Green School as well. I mean, that's the nice thing about being here. We always like to follow up with those students that are enrolled at Green School and see how they're doing and continue working with them if we need to so that they can really get settled in and thrive at this school. Great. So um, how long they will uh, join in Green School English is also depending on the, uh, you know, a preliminary hmm. test to Green School English, yes? Yeah, so how long, um, I see a question, how long does the Green School English course last? Well. Um, that partly up to up to mm. you you have freedom to join for a full semester what is four blocks or you could join for one block two blocks three blocks if you would like or again yeah a full semester so normally the course will um, last about four to 16 weeks depending on how many blocks you you join for um, each block is about four weeks with the exception of semester two um, in the next school year, where each block will be um, five weeks. We have a slightly longer semester there, so it's divided up into four um, five-week blocks. I also see a question about, is there a deadline to register for an English course in Green School? Um, for Green School English, yeah, we do run on a slightly different deadline to regular Green School admissions. Rupansha here handles all the um, Green School admissions. She also handles Green School English admissions for us, so come through me as well. Uh, the deadline to apply for Green School English courses, given our more flexible nature, the deadline is also a little bit more uh, flexible there. We do tend to ask that all applications are submitted at least one month prior to the entry. So all applications and um, required documents, including um, payment, um, are made one month prior to your um, start date at Green School English. Yeah, so um, just adding more information that, uh, again, uh, to my previous information that I shared with you, that uh, Green School regular uh, program, which is Green School Bali, is a little bit different timeline we have in here. So uh, we have two intakes of each skill, school year um, uh, start. We have uh, two in, um, in one in August for, uh, for the first semester and the second semester in 
uh, January. So for this coming August, we will be closing uh, application submissions in the first of March. And then uh, we we'll start offering for all approved application in April. And uh, where for January start, we'll be closing in September 1st for uh, application submissions. And then uh, the waitlist uh, application will be here from us about the placement offer in mid-October. So it's uh, quite a little bit different process there between Green School Bali and Green School English. So Green School English still, you know, there's flexibility there because this is kind of block system there and then we welcome everyone to apply as suitable as possible with their time and schedule. And um, but uh, at Green School Bali, we have that timeline uh, like I said previously, uh, to make sure that all the application are processed uh, as a standard practice we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just want to kind of, um, follow on from something that Jack was saying there. He kind of mentioned adjustment and transition at Green School, which I think are, um, we talk a lot about um, a student, a young student going to any school and how they have to transition into that. Um, I think Green School, I think we can all agree more than any school in the world that can be a um, a fascinating, uh, wonderful, terrifying transition. You know, um, when when you first get it, you're walking around with these wide eyes and, and you're listening to all the sounds of the jungle and everything like that. And that's just the the teachers that do that. I, I can't imagine what it's like for um for an eight year old to do that, for example. Um, and so I think something that Green School English does really well is ensures that these children in Green School English even if to look at this question that was asked here, even if it's a non-English speaking child or a student with with low levels of levels of English, to ensure that they're instantly part of the community, um, I've lost count of the amount of times that I've seen you know one of my eleven year old students playing with a student who who I don't recognise, and I've asked you know who, who is that, and they say oh it's, it's a green school English kid, you know they're instantly part of the community. Um, they're still, obviously, they have their um, differentiated support. They, they're looked after in a different way. And I know that that's kind of Jack's speciality is, is to ensure that um, any new student, no matter what their level of English, receives the specialized support that they need. And of course, for different students, that can mean different things. Um, it might be a writing or a speak, an issue with speaking confidence, which I think is where I, I fall down with Bahasa Indonesia. I'm, I'm just not confident <laughs> enough. You know, I, I wish I could be. Um, uh, we all know that as individuals, everyone needs different things. Um, but I think that's, that's a, a question that we definitely need to address. I mean, Jack, how, how, how would you say the, the language barrier kind of manifests itself in, in Green School English? And how can we overcome that? Yeah, so I mean, that's what we work on um, when we are on the Green School English program. And a big part of it can just simply be um, building that confidence yeah. amongst the students. Sometimes we find we have students come in to Green School English or come into Green School and actually their English proficiency is, is very good. They, they have the proficiency they need to, to learn in the classes, but they lack that um, English confidence to maybe socialize with other students, yeah. to really kind of feel like they, they fit in. So a lot of what we do is kind of pushing those kids a little bit on their comfort zones, getting them out of their comfort zone a little bit, building that confidence. So once they go into a primary classroom or even a middle school classroom, they've got that English confidence. I said like, hey, I'm ready to go in and speak English all day and communicate with um, other English speakers at Green School rather than, you know, buddy up with um, other students that maybe just speak their own language and talking to them and like Pak Dave said, um, it's amazing when we see our students out at playtime um, or when we're doing shared activities with the primary school, when we see them socializing and talking English with um, other Green School students, I mean, that's just a sign of success for us and just so rewarding yeah. to see. Yeah, and, and I think um, what you just, something you said there is very true as well, um, the nature of just pushing just outside of the comfort zone. Mm. I remember reading um, some some paper a while back that which, which argued that the best learning for young people takes place just outside of their comfort zone. You know, not not too far. And so, of course, we do have that wonderful community of teachers and students who are able and parents who are, who are able to offer support to new families and new students. But um, I think anybody who comes here is automatically pushing themselves just that little bit outside of their comfort zone. 
because um you know green school is a can be a frenetic and you know amazing place and you know when i it's we had one of those days this morning when we had i had to drive on my bike through the, the pouring rain and so it's, it's been oh, one of those days and, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those days where you just never quite get dry you, know, you just mm. stay damp for, for the entire day but you know everyone's like that and it's, it's still it's all part of the incredible atmosphere that, that i think we as faculty and, and as um, employees and parents we, we all try to build here um so i think just if, if the language ability is lower than, than perhaps some other students for green school english i think it's more to do with that mindset of taking a risk and kind of moving just outside of your comfort zone and of course you know it's if, if you've got a young child like like grade three it's very much um a question that i think you ask yourself as a parent um what will it be like for my son or daughter to really um attend this you know unique school which you know it absolutely is um yeah so just just that little that nature of life at green school there's all this incredible learning and communication and team building and emotional support so much of it takes place just outside of, of the comfort zones and i think that's as a teacher i think that's one of the most important things um we can do as as a school yeah that's great so uh by the way jack uh i just met someone out there mm -hmm. uh this morning and i'm asking that if i know that's your first block of this semester already mm -hmm. start how come if someone wants to just jump in to your to your class in the middle if even in the middle of the block mm. is it is it acceptable or you prefer to for them to apply for the next block so in that case we would probably ask them to delay their entry to the beginning of of the next block um as like i mentioned before we we designed the program so that at the beginning um each block is its own sort of compartmentalized um learning that build off each mm -hmm. other but allow students coming in later to kind of jump straight in so if it was sort of midway through a block we would probably yeah, ask them to join at the beginning of the next block I mean, this allows them to come in um, with a fresh topic, also with new students as well. Mm -hmm. And it helps ease that transition. And yeah. we, we set up orientation for them at the beginning of those blocks as well. Right. So we would ask, um, yeah, yeah, for them to okay. join it. Good to know, time. because sometimes parents and students mm. get excited, you know, yeah. want to start like a well. Yeah. And then rather than spending two more or three more weeks waiting for next block, they prefer to, you know, just jumping in here yeah. and whatever we can do so yeah. good to know so yeah, yeah uh, ab absolutely it. you can get really excited <laughs> and just want to start straight away mm -hmm. but um fortunately with the block system you won't have to wait too long yeah. to to yeah. jump in at the at the next you block. are already flexible enough and yeah time. yeah <laughs> And like bamboo yeah, yeah. And like bamboo one um, of our green school skills. absolutely yeah, yeah the amount of times we say that <laughs> um and i think it's important to note as well yeah. that um you know if if the child does go through green school english and uh, you know there's every chance that as far as literacy skills and maybe speaking on it going to middle school literacy class with, with me and my colleagues and yes they may still be a little bit behind the students especially native english speakers um but not to say that they're jumping into the deep end. Um, we, for all we talk about, really asking um, the kids to engage with the world issues and um, really thinking about their place in the world. That support for them, that foundational support, is still offered um, for the students who really need, you know, the the nuts and bolts of English really to be to be ironed out. And um, I think we spend a lot of time with teachers ensuring that the kids don't think that an issue with spelling or an issue with grammar is a reflection on them as students um i make a big thing of when in, in my class my spelling is terrible you know i'm, I'm, an, I'm an english teacher my spelling sucks you know? so, so so what i do is i ask the student how to spell certain words sometimes you know so i, I think it's so important to uh, we aim again another buzzword at green school is the holistic development of the child and it's so important that um that when they come through green school english they get that foundational knowledge if they don't have it all in place and they come into middle school literacy, that's no problem. It's our privilege to work with them, to develop them as young young people and young learners, and to keep working on those um, skills, whether it's grammar or speaking confidence um, or reading, whatever it is. And I think that's you know an, an area that kind of that we do really well at, at, at Green School. It's not so much a push in the deep end, even though it can feel like it sometimes when you first come here. There is that wonderful. Um, 
colleagues and you know this brilliant teams that I have in middle school and the Jack has with Green School English um, that offer brilliant individualized sports to the students. And I think that's one of our absolute strengths as a school is that we're we um, doing a standard practice there with uh, after the Green School English uh, achievements uh, program and also uh, the, the the English level bridge mm. and after Green School uh, English program and um, also uh, the behavior expectation meet mm. the Green School uh, Bali household and then uh, again. It's prioritized, but not guaranteeing. Mm. Uh, we everyone should follow the timeline of application process of Green School yeah. yeah. And just to add on that, I mean, this is something that we get asked um, a lot: is will yeah, if I join Green School English, will I be guaranteed a place at a Green School? Well, it will depend on a few factors. I mean, first and foremost, it does still require you to make an application to Green School, you will still need to make and it's a separate um, through the same system, but of a separate course. application yeah. process. Yeah. And our, if you've already applied to Green School English, it's very easy yeah. for our admissions team to yeah. help you go through um, that process. And it will be based on things, you know, how is their English proficiency and things like that. And, you know, if you're worried about this, then you can talk to talk to us and we can help advise you, you know, if we are taking on a student in Green School English that is maybe looking to apply for uh, who is 10 years old and looking to apply to Green School. And if we know that, you know, that their English is at a, a lower level and it might be difficult to get them to the level required to really thrive mm -hmm. um, in the primary school. And, you know, we'll be upfront about that um, initially and, and let you know that, you know, oh, well, they're coming in with yeah. zero English. It's unlikely yeah. that they will um, make the progression required in one semester. However, you know, we will do an assessment with that student when they join and we get, you know, say, oh, well, you know, given where they are now, um, a 16 week course, they can probably be um, where they need to be um, for entry into Green School. And just from, from past results um, of students that have joined Green School English and then um, gone on to apply to Green School, I mean, we have a pretty good um, success rate. I would say probably about 80% of the students that have joined our program and then gone on to apply to Green School have managed to get a place right. in the school. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's the whole process of uh, Green School Bali, between Green School Bali and Green School English. But I, this is quite simple process actually if you already start one of those and then um, we just need to we are in, in here to support you along the uh, process along the way to make the applications uh, process successfully uh, again so please be aware if you are applying for green school bali you just need to checking the timeline we already mm. published to you and then uh, we just you just need to follow the step that we uh, directing you through the system open apply so yeah so by the way um what the if someone uh, from green school english already enroll at green school valley and then find still need support in either high school middle school or maybe upper primary mm -hmm. what kind of uh, uh our faculty yeah. support they will give to that uh, yeah, so, so we made the conscious decision at the start of um, this academic year, so back in August. Um, in the past, we did have a separate learning support class. Um, but I think one thing that we really want to get away from is kind of the stigma of, of, of going into learning support, um, especially because uh, that might lead to you know students feeling hopeless, on seeing the value in their work. And, and so we made the conscious choice as a uh, middle school team to kind of move beyond that. Luckily, we, we have... Um, full-time um, counsellors, learning, learning support counsellors. So we still have the the teachers who will be teaching learning support, but instead they've worked their schedule so that, so that they're able to come into classes. Um, so the students who maybe need that extra bit of support are fully integrated in the classes. But all it might mean is that they might have Igusana or Pakim who will, or Pak Francis, who will come in there and just sit down one-to-one -one whilst um, the main the main classroom teacher is able to work with other students and they're able to just check understanding mm. run through some ideas i know that as um as a middle school literacy teacher when i'm teaching something that i'm passionate about 
I can start speaking too quickly or I can get carried away. It's very easy to kind of um, forget that for a lot of these students, especially the quieter students, they may be missing um, certain parts of what we're doing. And so it's a huge um, benefit to us. We do have those specialist teachers who are able to come in and there's no um, stigma. There's, there's, there's no, um, no problem that they're not disruptive at all. They can just come in and do checks with the students, make sure the learning is still taking place there. And that's why um, even for the, uh, we had a couple of students who just joined uh, the full middle school curriculum from Green School English in January. Um, and instantly they, they have a friend, you know, their friendship group already. Um, the grade eight who joined instantly took part in the in a Quest project, which is the big grade eight summer project. And I know that at the beginning in, in January, he was, he was full of questions about, uh, you know, what it is we're supposed to be doing. Thankfully, um, the nature of our teaching and our learning is such that we can give them the individual support. Or if I'm really pressed, there will always be a learning support specialist who's able to sit down and really go through. And of course, they're trained so well to really um, look beyond, um, you know, what, what the students might be reluctant to talk about or what they, um, you know, kind of embarrassment maybe of, of not getting certain concepts and to really like pull out what the student needs. Um, we're very fortunate to have such a, a fantastic uh, group of learning support teachers yeah. here. I mean, yeah, there is a great team um, of learning support teachers at Green School as well. And one of the nice things is, is before a student transitions from Green School English into Green School, we'll sit down with yeah. that learning support team and we can talk about, you know, what's that student's needs and so on. So once they enter the school, um, those teachers, they already know the student quite well. Um, often they will actually come and come see that student in our classes. So yeah, there's just such an easy transition into the school. They already know what they need to work on and so on. It's not like they're getting an entirely new student. They've got to yeah. learn all like, you know, what works for them, what doesn't and so on. It's just, yeah, just straight we'll in, smooth, it, yeah. smooth transition. Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe go next to the question. Can yeah. we do short course? Yeah. What? I, think, I, I, I assume for green school yeah, English, I maybe. So. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You can um, sign up for just one block. Uh, we do have um, quite a few students that will just come, like I said, for just uh, one block. Maybe they're not looking to enter green school um, afterwards, but are just looking for um, a once in a lifetime experience here in Bali and here at green school. Maybe they're looking to improve their English, to go on to another school or just improve their English for going back to um, the school that, you know, they're coming from in their home country. So it's absolutely possible to do a short course. Um, our shortest courses are one block, what is um, four weeks long. Yeah, so the shortest we offer is a four-week course. And that's a good length. Anything shorter, it's kind of, you know, hard to really um, get much of an impact in there. Four weeks is long enough that you can make you see sort of noticeable changes in their English ability. And I think the thing that people, parents have always come back and said that they notice the most is confidence. Four weeks can really help boost that confidence to get out there and speak. So one semester is five blocks or four blocks? Four blocks. Four blocks. Four blocks. Four blocks. Four blocks. Yes. So four blocks. Uh, I uh, from your experience, how many students, how uh, how many percentage of students taking full semester compared with those only short course? I mean, I would two? say we probably have about sixty to seventy percent of our students join okay. for a full semester. Um, most of the students joining for a full semester are looking to go on mm. to Green School, and wow. if students are looking to enter Green School, um looking to go into an English learning environment, we probably would um, more likely suggest a full semester as this gives us more time to work with them, more time to get them prepared. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we do have about probably about 30 to 40 percent of our students come for just one or two blocks. And as I mentioned earlier, they're normally the students that are just coming to Green School English for an English learning experience and maybe not looking to um, enter green school afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe Padev can answer the next question from Mikhail Ahmed. Yeah, so, um, the question is, do we teach in any other languages apart from English? I think it's important to say that, so English is the language of instruction. You know, that is, um, if you go from classroom to classroom, the teacher will almost always be speaking in English. The exception to that being the Vasa Indonesia classes. 
um, which are obviously um, aimed for full immersion in um, just for the for the 50 minutes that that class is, uh, two or three times a week. Um, so, but one thing that we can say is the we have such an incredibly international community here, um, and so it's very very common to you know to be walking along one of the roads and to, to Dutch kids talking together in Dutch or or whatever language it is. I think that's so important, even if we don't teach uh, in other languages apart from Indonesian, to really value these languages and these cultures, um, whether it's, you know, a, a young Japanese student or a student lawyer, you know, but, uh, we have to really um, respect and they will all, and kind of admire different ways in which our language um, um, means that we, that we see the world. Um, so although that um, English is the prime focus, and I think that is important, but I would say that as an English teacher, I, I think it's important to be a global citizen. Um, we also have those Bahasa Indonesia classes. And then, as we mentioned before, if able as a student to graduate out of Bahasa Indonesia, you will be offered um, uh, French classes and Spanish classes. And who knows, you know, if, if we have a teacher next year who is from another country and wishes to teach speak mandarin. yeah speak mandarin mm. yeah absolutely we've got um we have a few brazilian teachers so there could always be portuguese classes as well um i think oh, you know we have this incredibly diverse community i think we work out in middle school there are 42 nationalities i, I think yeah. um and so for all we uh, we have english as the primary language of focus we're fortunate that we can always fall back on um and kind of explore these other languages and explore these cultures as well and i think that's something that green school does really well we're always open to um whether it's uh, parents who want to you know offer a short course in japanese or whether it's somebody who wants to one of my best classes last last year was um a syrian teacher who, who came in and she spoke to my students about um about growing up in syria and you know uh, kind of getting rid of some of the misconceptions that they have um, so even though that was in English, it's a wonderful way to break down cultural barriers. And um, that's what we're fortunate to be able to do in middle school, to really engage the local community, to um, uh, just broaden the kids' horizons and deepen their worldview. Uh, it will almost always be in English, but there are always opportunities to learn Bahasa Indonesia or to learn you know, all of these other languages as well. I think it's it's not uncommon to see the students teaching each other, actually, um, their own languages. I mean, we had a very international group in Green School English last semester, and I remember by the end of the semester, they could all say sort of, please, thank you, count to 10, I think in about five different languages, because we'd see them out on bre um, at break time teaching each other Japanese, mm -hmm. Russian, yeah. Dutch. It's just really amazing well, yeah, to see. Community of learners. Yeah. yeah. And you have to point out, I think, because they are middle schoolers, generally they're probably teaching each other swear words in Russian and Japanese yeah. and things like that. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, we, we, we try our best yeah. to keep, keep on top of that. Yeah. yeah. But you're right, uh, you know, teaching each other to, to count and doing all these things, yeah. especially when you see the really little kids who, um, you know, one of them, oh, they might be talking to each other and one might be speaking in Spanish and one might be speaking in Italian, but of course there's that crossover so they can understand each other. Um, it's really like hard, mm. hard yeah. to see it. It's quite inspiring. And yeah. it's a very international community of, of teachers as well, yeah. what we've mentioned, and that can really help with students settling in a little bit. I know for some students, it's, it can be really nerve wracking when you're entering a school and you feel like there's going to be no one that speaks the same language um, as you yeah. at that school. But fortunately, I, here at Green School, I'm not sure the exact number of nationalities we have on the faculty, but we probably have a good 20 languages covered um, amongst right. our faculty. So I know one or two people here who speak three or four languages. Yeah. So they've yeah. got quite wow. a few under the belt. And that, again, really helps. We don't want them constantly falling back on that mother tongue but knowing that there is always someone there that they can converse with in their own language, that when they're having problems or feeling lonely and homesick, yeah. that helps a lot yeah. as well. And yeah. it's and in, in middle school literacy, when we have the uh, parent-teacher conferences, um, you know, often we do find that um, I, I might have a 12-year-old who is fluent in English, even though it's their second language, but their parent is maybe not so confident in English. And you know, we know as teachers to slow down and really... Um, grade our language, but that often gives a great opportunity for the young person themselves to kind of translate, if needed, between um, 
parent and teacher, but then um, shows it's, it's a good chance for them to reflect um, critically on their work and what they're doing. Um, so even if you as a parent, if you are not confident in your English ability, um, again, as, as Jack said, there's always um, a community to help support. And there's always uh, you know, teachers in the community that will grade their language, will slow down. And just as we focus on with the students, if we're teaching to a parent, it's all about building up your confidence in English as well. Wow. Great, guys. Thank you very much for joining our session today. Mm -hmm. This is really good information we share with our parents out there. And then I just about uh, want to wrap up what the session we have today. So for all the families with uh, kids uh, who has limited English, please uh, feel free to contact us either to consider Green School English enrollment or Green School Bali uh, enrollment. However, I can say that if you have young kids under five years old, feel free to just hit Green School Bali enrollment them. You will be surprisingly seeing their English rapidly improve mm. in our uh, immersion English environment here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, please again just remind you that application of Green School Bali will be closing next week for the application submission, but we will can give you another two weeks to complete all the required documentation. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And then thank you guys for joining thank you me for today having as well. Actually, yeah. And then feel free to email us if you have further questions and then access the recorded version of this station, the live session. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.